Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be your host this morning. We'll be joined a little bit later this morning by Doreen Hannes. Doreen, as you know, is a special friend of ours and a true patriot. She is the uh, author and uh, purveyor of truthfarmer.com, an outstanding website that uh, talks about all things self-reliant, all things uh, good, patriotic, solid American, and uh, specifically relates to issues relating to agriculture and things like that. Um, Doreen will be joining us in a, about the quarter hour, uh, but I wanted to open my bullet points this morning with a witness form which I filled out for the Missouri House Bill 527. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, the 527 House Bill is basically a bill to provide for Missouri to create a, a uh, uh, committee, if you will, to oversee and review federal regulation. Now, you've heard me talk in, in uh, reference to the Restore Missouri Project that one of the things that we need in our state is the ability and the wherewithal, and by the way, every state should have this, to be able to analyze and evaluate federal mandates and determine whether or not they are actually in our best interest, and if they are not, simply nullify them. Now, we know that we have passed nullification procedures before. It's a, it's a time-honored and true uh, method of states stepping away from federal mandates that are extra or unconstitutional. So these forms, the witness form, gets submitted to the legislator who is going to bring them before the House when the bill is actually heard. And that what that provides is the opportunity for them to say, see, this is how many folks in my, in my uh, uh, area are interested in conversing about this, and I've got, a, I've got some fors and I've got some againsts, or whatever the case may be. So Without further ado, I'll read this to you because uh, Doreen will be on with us in a moment. It's time for Missouri to preserve and reserve our state sovereignty and independence under the 10th Amendment. Our state's legislative assembly has allowed our national government to overstep the bounds of constitutionality for too long. Our founders well understood the principle and motivating force for the 10th Amendment. They understood that a national government was to be expressly limited in its delegated authority. Arguably, they were adamant about preserving the new republic from be descending into another monarchy or other form of totalitarian state. Madison made clear that each state had a duty to interpose in a protective fashion on behalf of their citizens. He believed that our states must act to oppose federal overreach as the first step before secession. Similar to the First Amendment, which provides for our right to redress our grievances with our government, both state and federal, the Second Amendment was reserved only to act as a backstop of force if the first failed to correct the trajectory. The second is in place merely as a last-ditch responsive force opposing tyranny. Washington is famously quoted, Government is not reason. It is not eloquent. It is force. Like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. The First Amendment provides water to prevent a fire from raging out of control. The Second Amendment is the principle of mad, mutually assured destruction, in the sense that if all else fails, we have a last-ditch method of preserving our republic. It was never intended to be used. Like the principle of mad, it merely exists to act as a deterrent to tyranny. Madison's point was that similar to the stepped gradations of the First and Second Amendments, our states have the right and duty to interpose and effectively nullify extra-constitutional actions of the national government. If our states cannot control the fearful master, then secession would be the mad, last-ditch solution. In his Virginia Resolution of 1798, Madison wrote, that this assembly most solemnly declares a warm attachment to the union of the states, to maintain which it pledges its power, and that for this end it is their duty to watch over and oppose every infraction of those principles which constitute the only basis of that union, 
because a faithful observance of them can alone secure its existence and happiness. These words were a thinly veiled hint of the last-ditch efforts a state may take were a national government to run amok. No other explanation may be inferred. The state wants to remain in the Union, which it joined and pledged to delegate some limited authority. However, the state has the obligation to withdraw that delegated authority when it is used for purposes to which it was not authorized. It stands to reason that their desire to maintain the Union of the States was threatened by federal overreach. If overreach cannot be checked, the principles of MAD apply. Before enslavement comes separation. Patrick Henry stated, Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Mr. Henry referred to the call to arms for the Revolutionary War. However, his cry rings no less true for our times and our situation. Our state must prevent usurpation by our national government. Our founders never intended to allow such a bloated and overwhelming federal government to bribe our states into slavery with money, coercion, and manipulation based upon dependency. Our states were intended to stand alone, sovereign, and independent, but bound together in common cause, conferring and delegating extremely limited power to a federal government for the sole purpose of accomplishing those tasks that were in the best interests of all the states. Never did they anticipate a federal government that would reverse the polarity of the triangle of power. All power resides in the individual. He delegates limited powers to the state for the benefit of society. The state, in turn, is authorized to delegate limited power to the federal government for only those issues which affect states as a whole union. This assembly today has a duty to interpose, nullify, and make null and void that federal usurpation that is in direct conflict with the natural rights of men. The state accepted its delegated but limited power from the people to act in their best interests. Your action today will secure those most fundamental rights or ensure that eventually the principle of MAD will be the only last-ditch solution. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke I ask you directly, will you do your part today to take a stand and preserve our union, protect the solemn rights of our state citizens, and stand in the breach for us? And that's my bullet points. I encourage and ask each of you to participate and submit witness forms, not only for this particular legislative action, but also others, because our republic is dependent upon our watchful eye. It is dependent upon us participating, playing an active role, not a passive one. We cannot sit passively by and allow our government to make determinations and rules which are against our best interests. Those who feel that they can sit back and allow others to rule and engage them in regulations and in legislation which is against their best interests are doomed to repeat history. We have seen throughout time and time and time again that governments who have unlimited power exert unlimited force. Where do you stand? Will you stand in the breach with us? You're listening to America's Voice now. We're going to take a moment's break. When we return, Doreen will join us. We'll be discussing a number of issues that are current uh, in, in our state issues today, including the RFID legislation that's out there. We'll be right back.
The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry, your Class 3 dealer for automatic weapons and suppressors, including Gem Tech and Huntertown, with a great selection of holsters, slings, magazines, and gun storage options. West Plains Pawn and Jewelry will also do special orders. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry, 1713 West U.S. Highway 160, or shop online at westplainspawn.com. I know what you're thinking, Bunk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Dirty Harry gets all his ammo from the battery station. John Rambo, you guessed it. He gets his ammo from the battery station, too. So if you need ammo, go to the place where the guys who know about ammunition go, the battery station. They have one of the largest supplies of ammunition in the area. So make sure you're stocked up and don't get low on shells. Go to the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. are returned. We are joined this morning by Doreen Hannes. Doreen, as you know, joins us every Friday to discuss those issues which are uh, relevant and relative to our situation here in the state of Missouri and across our nation. Good morning, Doreen. Well, good morning, Michael. Thank Happy you. to be on. Thank you very much for joining us. I know Friday mornings are uh, a busy time for you, so I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, uh, to be with us. Well, that's all right. I, I enjoy having the opportunity to. <laughs> well, you know, you always bring so much value to the show, and I kid you not when I say that. I get emails from folks and stuff posted up on our Facebook page and things all the time. So um, you're a welcome guest here, and uh, people love you. So um, <laughs> I, I, I wish you'd do your own show because you, you, it would be a hit. Well, I mean, um, not not to <laughs> make, not to say that I don't want you on mine on Fridays, but I want you to do your own too. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I did have my own radio show for um, somewhere yeah, I, about two years. I know and you did. Those archives are available elsewhere, but um, sure. it's a lot of work. It is. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, and, and it's fun, you know, but you have to be able to work the business side of it as well as just the, you know, the informational side of it, and uh, Honestly, I'm not that good of a salesman, Mike. There's that pesky business side yes, of it. Yes, I know. You know, <laughs> just sneaks around on us. Yeah. So you know. Anyway, I mean, I figure that um, what I'm doing is I do a number of different radio shows on a pretty regular basis. Yours, of course, is the one that that I'm on the most often. Well, thank um, you. Well, hey, I consider- you're local, and I'm all about the local. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got you, but I consider myself privileged. Well. Thank you. I, so. I think you're doing a great job, and I'm I'm happy that I can be a part of it, Mike. You know. So, so, what's on our agenda for this discussion this morning? Well, okay, this is kind of funny, and this is actually it's a little bit aggravating to me, Mike. Um, for years, we fought against the National Animal Identification System. Right. I spent about two and a half years up at Jefferson City working with the legislators who really did want to help us to constrain this ridiculous program. I'll go through what it entails in in just a minute. And we did get legislation passed after a number of different blanket parties from some entities that were actually sworn by their membership to support a voluntary program. Right. And, and I don't think I've ever quite thought of it as political blanket party, but that's, uh, that's a great mental image. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm serious. We, we got legislation that was actually quite good through the House, and the day after it went through the House, we were called in to meet with the Attorney General's office, the Governor's office, the Department of Agriculture, and three quote-unquote farm group representative uh, organizations to change the legislation that was passed to make it more palatable for those who actually wanted to have it. And, you know, that's just not right. (laughs) Oh, I hear you. Uh, You know, so at any rate, um, the issue with this is that what happened is the USDA had this program. First, it was called Farm Animal Identification Recording. Then it was called 
NFAIP, National Farm Animal Identification Plan. Then it was called the USAIP, United States Animal Identification Plan. Then it was called the National Animal Identification System. And that's where everybody got on the bandwagon, and they wanted this program to be mandatory with enforcement in January of 2009. So people jumped on the bandwagon, and we slowed that train down. Then they changed the name to Animal Disease Traceability, and now the final rule is in implementation. Everybody went to sleep after they said, okay, we're not going to do the NAIS, and they changed the implementation method a little bit, but the end result is going to be the same, and now it is in effect. You know, it is constantly, uh, and it should be obvious to everyone, that our, our government constantly tries to pass legislation, which we block because the citizens get up in arms about it and say, whoa, whoa, wait, stop right there. Mm-hmm. And the legislation is blocked on a, on a whatever level it is, whether it's state or federal. Mm-hmm. And then they simply reinstitute it through another method and do an end run around us. Yeah. And, you know... On, on a personal level, when I see and hear that, what that tells me is that we have completely lost the entire perspective of we, the people, government, by and for. I, I, I agree with you 100%. And I'm not sure how we regain that short of, you know, a march on Washington and 50 million of us standing outside filling literally the, 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 the uh, city of D.C. or the right. district of, of D.C., standing out there with torches and pitchforks, and I mean literally, just to make our point that they must send out the monster. (laughs) Well, you know, honestly, I don't know, but I think that the absolute important thing for us to do is to really push the Tenth Amendment, to push it so hard that your average bear goes, okay, I mean, the average person sitting on their couch at home that isn't necessarily listening to your program, Michael, Right. For for them to go, wait a minute, if the state governments have to do everything the federal government says they have to do, then why do we have state government? <clears throat> exactly. And, and honestly, if anyone is willing to, and I strongly encourage you, just get out there and type in uh, the uh, Alien Sed- and Sedition Acts or seven, the resolutions of 1798 and 1799. I know it's in Old English. Trust me. If you read it, and you read it slowly with a lot of pauses in between, you'll get exactly what they meant. And they were very clearly, now, and you have to understand we're, what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. These were the founders who wrote this. Jefferson and Madison were the two, were the two authors of these particular documents. Right. And they made it very clear that our government was, was acting in an extra-constitutional fashion and that we had the right and the obligation and the duty as yes. states to nullify that unconstitutional... And this was in relation to the Alien and Sedition Acts, specifically. Um, Again, in 1809, when Jefferson, who everyone, you know, considers to be the paragon of of conservative thought, actually passed uh, another act that was the uh, Embargo Act, um, the states of Connecticut wrote the... uh, I can't think of his name, Trumbull. Governor Jonathan Trumbull wrote a... uh, a, a, uh, a preamble and an opening speech in which he basically stated that, you know, the states not only have an obligation and a, and a right, but a duty to bar and, and protect the states from overreach by federal government. Absolutely. And, you know, it's so clear. All you've got to do, folks, is go look this stuff up. It is not hard to find. No. But it, what it really comes down to is this. Are you willing to do your due diligence and pay the small price of some research while giving up some couch potato time while giving up some time that you were, you know, going to do something else that really isn't that critical to your life and, and put your efforts and your energy and your knowledge and your wisdom to work to restore and preserve what we have as a republic. Because I'm telling you, if we don't do that, we'll go down as the stupidest and laziest generation in history. 
Well, you know, actually, that's one of the things. I, I literally had a dream, Michael, one time about being in a, <clears throat> a nice little containment facility with a 10-year-old, and I was like 70, and I was trying to describe to him what pizza tasted like, and he was like, <laughs> why didn't you fight? You know, it was... Exactly. And that's a nightmare, you know, <laughs> not actually a dream. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm committed to standing for... Are not just our constitutionally guaranteed rights, but these are God given rights that are supposed to be secured by a just government, and we cannot back down. We must have the right to profit from our labor and to choose whom we desire to sell our products to. Right. I mean, it's the most essential foundation of human liberty, and we as a nation, have allowed that to be co-opted, controlled, and destroyed by the federal regulatory process. And we, we have to get our state legislators to interpose on our behalf, and we must avail ourselves of our right and our duty to preserve some kind of economic potential for our progeny and for, hopefully, their progeny. If we don't, we're derelict. You know, what, what, what I'm reminded of is in the, the resolutions of 1798 and 99, mm -hmm. they specifically address the fact that if our states do not exercise their right for sovereignty and independence, that essentially what we are doing is declaring ourselves a monarchy. And that was their greatest fear. You know, because of right. course, they didn't have a totalitarian. They didn't use the word totalitarianism. They used the word monarchy because that was as close as they could come to the term dictatorship. Right. Right. And that's one that they had just literally gotten away from. <laughs> you know, they just escaped out of that deal. Right. So it was, <laughs> but it you, was present in their in their forefront of their thought process. Absolutely. And, and when you but you, when you look at what their what their statements were, it was so clearly defined, so clearly laid out. I mean, I, I don't even care if you're, if you're not a great reader. You can read that and gather enough information from that to get the tenor, the tone, and the intimation of exactly what they were referring to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are no less obligated to be as, as diligent and as dutiful about our obligation. And, and we have to have our state legislators. And honestly, if they won't do it, then we've got to remove them from office. Mm -hmm. We have to have the ability for states to operate independently. I, I, in that witness form, I referenced the fact that we've turned the triangle of power upside down. Yes. When you, know, when you look at the power that was delegated to governments by men in our Constitution and in our Declaration of Independence and in our Ten, ten Amendments, man is always at the top, at the peak of that, of that triangle. Right. And all rights are delegated to flow downward from man or right. men, right? What we've got now is a complete upside down flip, and we've got federal government, and, and it runs state uh, or individual to community government to state government to federal government right. in the true perspective of what it's intended to be. What we've done now is we've completely flipped that triangle upside down, and the wide part is at the top where federal government has all the power and all the rule, the state government comes second. Community governments come third, and we, as men, are at the bottom of that list. Absolutely, bearing the weight of all of this control. Exactly, and bearing the weight on a very, very thin and fragile tip, I mm -hmm. might add. You know, just to draw the mental picture one, <laughs> one stroke stronger. So, unfortunately, it's at this point that we have to demand that our, our state governments exercise our right as independent and sovereign states, because if we don't, we will lose whatever we've got, you know, in terms of what, whatever little sovereignty we've got left, right? Right, so. right. And, you know, actually, I mean, this, this entire thing, all of the issues that we're dealing with um, that I can think of, Michael, are international guidelines and initiatives that are being set up to have legal framework for enforcement in our nation. Exactly. So uh, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll, be, uh, we'll continue to uh, speak with Doreen. You can find Doreen's website at truthfarmer.com. And also, Doreen is uh, very heavily involved in the Property Rights Coalition Group, which is prcnews.org. 
uh, please make sure that you visit those sites. If you can help uh, support Doreen and her efforts, there's a donate button on the page there, and I'm sure she would be very, very grateful for your assistance. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk more with Doreen. You're listening to America's Voice Now. News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. We're paying more for stuff, especially gas. The rising cost of gasoline gave consumer prices their biggest increase in almost four years last month. February prices rose 0.7 percent. If you factor out food and energy, core CPI was up 0.2 percent, right in line with expectations. Fox Business Network's Diane Macedo. Another broken Carnival cruise ship, the legend, canceling a stop at Grand Cayman Island, heading back to Tampa, Florida with engine trouble. The Carnival Dream, stuck in St. Martin, fined by this guy. Everybody I spoke to on the beach has, has been very happy. They're being flown back to Florida. Last month, the Carnival Triumph spent five days stranded in the Gulf of Mexico. A British auction house now says it is sure it has the violin played by the band leader on the Titanic as it went down. It was recovered seven years ago with testing now complete. Fox News. We report. You decide. Thanks to our friends over at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance. You can reach Brian down there at 870-492-4030. It's located a half mile east of Walmart on 3225 Route 62 Mountain Home. My dear friend Mary over at Gentilly's Artisan Bakery, the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She's located at number two Evans Arcade, and you can call her at 255-2253. My friends over at Pizza Hut on Porter Wagoner Boulevard they have an outstanding lunch opportunity. You can, uh, from 11 till 2, and you can have salad and pizza, something tasty and something good for you. Our friends uh, Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 293-0116. If you're considering doing any kind of remodeling, new or custom construction, and or light commercial, give Bill a call and let him bid on your next project. Our friends batteries at the Battery Station at 303 Washington Avenue, 417-257-7799. They can be found at thebatterystation.com. Our friends over at West Plains Pawn and Gun, an outstanding opportunity for with 400 firearms under glass. You can reach them at 417-256-3000, and they are located at westplainspawn.com. Located physically at Highway 160, about a mile past Walmart on the right-hand side. And finally, the sponsor of our phone lines, Wits End Classic Barbershop, located on the square in West Plains. Best haircut you can get for 10 bucks, and a nice young man as well. Please visit and support our sponsor. America's Voice Now, delivering truth over mainstream propaganda every single day. Hi, my name is Michael Evans, and I'm your host, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and Saturday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. Join me daily for important guests and my unique slant on hot topics in the news. Visit americasvoicenow.org for even more news, articles, and commentary, and watch our show streaming live to your PC. Share your morning with me. Get educated, informed, motivated, and activated. America's Voice Now, right here on 107.1. Weather is a service of News Talk 1071 The Point. Contact Josh or Cody at 255-2548 for more information on making weather sponsorships part of your marketing plans. From the Point Weather Center, for this morning, a clear sky to be mostly sunny through the day, the high near 80, mainly clear tonight, low 52. Mostly cloudy, much cooler tomorrow, high 66. Clouds and showers tomorrow night into the day on Sunday, even cooler on Sunday with a high around 50. I'm staff meteorologist Jim Minaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. Another year older, another birthday blood. Not when you're listening to the birthday club here on 1071, the point each morning during the morning show. Proudly presented by Ryan's Family Restaurant. Call in your loved ones, your mom, dad, grandma, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, whoever, for their chance to be the winner of a great buffet and drink from Ryan's Family Restaurant. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you from 1071, the point and Ryan's Family Restaurant. We are back. Thank you for taking the time to ride with us through those uh, capitalist commercial breaks. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I love capitalism. Hey, yeah, a couple of quick things I wanted to note. Battery Station has a new 
um, a product down there from Sc- uh, Spring Creek Beef. Um, they are, uh, you're able to go down there and buy uh, natural grass-fed beef with no hormones, no antibiotics or anything along those lines. It's not grain-fed, all natural grass-fed. And you can uh, get that because by going down to uh, the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue, uh, where you can pick it up locally because it comes from a farm way outside of town. And um, I tell you what, I've tried it, and it is absolutely astounding. If you haven't had grass-fed beef before... Uh, that is completely just, you know, straight right off the cow, but with none of the nonsense you normally get at your local grocery store, you're going to be impressed. Uh, I encourage you to get down there. There's no fat on it. you got to cook it a little bit differently, a little shorter, because you know, there's, there's so little fat in it. Excellent for you. Get down, get down there and see the folks over at the battery station and uh, get, a, get a chance to take a crack at that. Um, also, our reloading class on the 30th of March uh, if you're interested in learning how to reload metallic cartridges, we have a few seats left open. Make sure that you send me an email immediately to mike at americasvoicenow.org, and uh, I'll make sure that I add you to that list. And then also our Tactical uh, One pistol course is going to be held on the 23rd and the 24th, and we have seats open for both men and women. Uh, we are going to run a women's only class if if someone would prefer to to take that route. Um, if they're uncomfortable training with a bunch of men. By the way, not for nothing, but, you know, the women shoot better than the men anyway. And, and I've, I've actually been in them where the couples have taken it together, and by the end of the class, he's steaming because she outshot him. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about irony, right? But sometimes women are uncomfortable training with men. And so basically we'll split the class. And now if you want to train together, you can. But if you want to take it as a women's only group, you can, you can go with the women's only group and, you know, be, be uh, separated that way. Also, I've had a lot of questions. Can we use a 22? And the answer is absolutely, definitively yes. Uh, one, the cost of ammunition when you're going to shoot 800 rounds is about 500 bucks if you're going to shoot a 9 millimeter or a 40. And it's about uh, $80 if you're going to shoot 22. So uh, by all means, you're certainly welcome to use a 22. And um, we encourage you to, uh, to participate in that. That class is on the 23rd and the 24th. And if you're planning on attending that one, I need, it, I need to hear from you immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> because we're trying to uh, you know, count out or make sure we don't have too many people. And um, we've got uh, quite, a few, uh, quite a few members now. So um, immediately contact me about that. The cost of that class is $175. That is knocked down from, from $225 for, most, for just regular folks who take it. So just by listening to America's Voice Now, you got yourself a $50 discount in taking that class. And I'm going to tell you, Two days of taking that class, and you're going to walk away with a whole new feeling about your and, and confidence in your ability to handle a firearm in a defensive situation. So, uh, Mike at America's Voice Now dot org. Make sure you send me an email immediately, and if you're interested in our co-op, also send me deta- or send me your info. I'll get you a reply back on how you can participate in that. We've got an order upcoming in March as well. Okay, so that's enough of the commercials. <laughs> Well, they're, you know... They're, I, hey, they're necessary. They're man. actually not even really commercials because none of these things are... I mean, they might cost you a little bit to take the class, but we get deep discounts from what normally these classes run for people. And, you know, the co-op doesn't cost you anything to participate in. You just buy the food you want at wholesale, and it's bulk. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to buy big bulk packages of food and st- sock it away or whatever, um, you know, hey. Th- so this isn't even a commercial, folks. It's just a notice. <laughs> there you go. It's not a service because we've had entirely too much of the services. Yeah, really. We've got the FSIS, which yeah. uh, that feeds in nicely to the grass-fed beef. Um, yeah. Most people are not aware that the USDA Food Safety Inspection Service has a 45-page document that tells what is allowable to be inserted into beef that's being processed and literally half of those ingredients do not have to appear on the label isn't that amazing and now they just came out with this new tagging thing right um uh, the well, ear tags for the old for tagging thing right well it's the old been, tagging thing right, right. so and, <laughs> you know let, let me run through that real quickly now under the nais please do uh, under the NAIS, the, uh, the terminology went like this. You had to get a premises identification number, and then you'd have to have an animal identification number, and there were two types of those. The first one being an individual animal identification number for animals like cattle that are typically 
raised up in groups where they intermingle with other ages or a group identification number, which is for chickens like broiler houses, hogs, things that are raised in the same age group, basically. And then you had to have animal tracking, which is whenever you moved an individual animal or a group of animals, that would have to be reported within 24 hours um, in yeah. order to facilitate, they say, disease tracking and the potential to control disease spread. Right. All right. So now everybody got up in arms about NAIS. And so the USDA held listening sessions and changed it to the ADT. And instead of having a premises identification number, we now have unique location identifiers. And the AINs, the animal identification numbers, are still the same. And instead of having animal tracking, we now have to have traceability reports with instead of having them, you should file them within 24 hours, but you had up to 48 hours, now you have two business days. So it's really substantially different, right? You isn't, know. isn't it amazing that no matter how you, no matter how they couch it, no matter what the rules are, it always walks like a duck, it flies like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's right. a duck. It's a duck. <laughs> and and the issue is that what happened was our jurisdiction here in this country, and this is this is very important, and it is something that we can use. The jurisdiction in this country goes from state to federal and not the other way around. Right. And so using that jurisdictional issue as a leverage here against an international program that's to standardize and harmonize everything across the globe and to control and inventory all agricultural production, we were able to slow this train down. And now what they've done is the states are the ones who have to be compliant and they do not have penalties assessed to individuals for being out of compliance. So the, the impetus from the federal government is to have the states reach these tr- uh, traceability benchmarks of certain percentages in all varieties of species. And if they fail to meet those, then there's the potential for what would be known as sanctions against right. state. So essentially what they did is they took the onus off the individual, put it on the state, and then coerced the state through yes. intimidation that they're going to have to comply and accomplish the same es- essential end. All they did was change the responsibility of who's supposed to monitor it. Exactly. And that's that's the pathet- that's what I mean when I say they constantly are doing an end run. You know, they're do- they're doing cap and trade the same way. They can't get it through the House and the Senate. So they're going to have the EPA implement cap and trade without without legislation. Right. They they're doing the same thing with gun control. They can't get it through the House and Senate because the people will go out there and, and pull their senators and congress people back and, and rail against them. Right. So what they're doing is they just do it in an, in another fashion. In a regulatory fashion. Exactly. And yes. by the way, this dovetails right into what I've talked about with all these administrative agencies. Mm-hmm. These administrative agencies are extra constitutional, 100% unaccountable, they're unelected and they're bureaucratic. They're not, and they're career politicians, if you will, but without being elected. And, you know, unfortunately, they're eating our substance. And that's a, that's a phrase that's directly out of our Declaration of Independence. Because mm-hmm. what they have done is, and, and I, I, think the, I think the phrase was, and sent swarms hither to harass our people, mm-hmm. right? And, and, eat out our, and eat out our substance. And this is essentially, this is King George all over again, except this time it's King Obama and, or King, King Bush or, you know, King Clinton. Right. I mean, look, and, and by the way, this is not, this is not politically uh, leaning it's, one way or the other. I'm completely unbiased about it. I think they're all traitors. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and, and the issue is here that in this particular thing with the, um, the animal disease traceability, the chokehold is at the point of commerce. And right. So, you know, which is another ex- extra constitutional overreach on the commerce issue. Well, right. Yeah, the interstate commerce clause. What right. what is typically used by particularly the agricultural and the food administrations is using interstate commerce clause as a stranglehold and a hammer to enforce compliance with their initiatives and guidelines and desires. Right. Okay, now you've got the sale barns who are licensed by the USDA and inspected by the state. They're licensed by the state of Missouri in conjunction with the USDA, and they are the ones 
who have to implement this program. And who does it cost? It costs the producer. Exactly. And so what they do is they just keep shifting the level of responsibility from one party to another, following the, the path of least resistance, which is mm-hmm. typical of government. Find the path of least resistance, and but still implement exactly what it is as, as a control that you're looking for. So right. we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, we'll, we'll continue to discuss this. And then I'd like to talk a little bit about the... Uh, the uh, constitutional amendment that you've submitted okay. a, a modification to. So, okay. folks, you're listening to America's Voice now. We've got Doreen Hannes with us as our special guest on this and every Friday morning. We'll be back in just a moment. The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. Online at westplainspawn.com. Top of the line, new and used optics from Nikon, Leopold, Burris, Redfield, Zeiss, and Schmidt and Bender. Ask about their selection of binoculars, laser sights, and night vision goggles. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. 1713 West U.S. Highway 160 or shop online at westplainspawn.com. Family Fun and Fitness, LLC, presents rape and assault prevention classes at Country Covered in Licking, Missouri. Men, women, boys, and girls, if you want to know how to stack the deck in your favor in a situation where violence is the only answer, this class is for you. Rape and assault prevention classes are held Monday evenings at 5.30 beginning February 11th and run through March 18th. Class size is limited, so call today, 417-260-1006, or register at Country Covered, 217 North Highway 63 in Licking. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. I am back and I am happy to bring you up to speed as we loom closer and closer to the sequestration, as the Cardinals begin to gather in Rome, as all sorts of news from around the world collects. I will be your Sherpa through that complexity all on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. Sundays from 6 till 7, following Money Talk with Bob Brinker, it's the Weekend Journal with Hugh Hewitt on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071. When their five-year-old pestered them to let them play the game, Zombies vs. the Ninja, Greg and Sharon Kitchen's first instinct was to say, no, I don't think so, sweetie. Danny said he was offered the chance to buy more ammunition, and more ammunition, and more ammunition. Danny's game-playing session has cost the family $2,500. Saturdays, noon to 3 for the Kim Commando Show and weekdays at 720 for your digital minute. That's Kim Commando on the Ozarks Best News Talk. All right, we are back, and again, we are joined with uh, Ms. Doreen Hannes. She is the um, purveyor and owner of truthfarmer.com. That is a uh, an outstanding blog, and I strongly encourage you to get to it and read it and, and learn, uh, bookmark it, and make sure that you follow it on a routine basis. She's constantly posting great stories up there, information that you need to know about, uh, and it's not just it's not just local to our state, but it covers you know the nation. And um, she really, uh, I- I've never known anyone, Doreen, who's as fully informed as you are about these things. And that's, that's the reason why you're so popular with our, our listeners. You know, they just love it. Well, and, uh, you know, you help them find information or at least tip them off to news and information mm-hmm. that they didn't even know was going on, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's terribly important because, you know, the mainstream news does not cover this stuff at all. It's they all don't? Kinda, no, oh. no, 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 no. I sorry. thought we were getting the full story. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> la <La-dee-da. laughs> Just don't drink a soft drink over 16 ounces and everything Actually, will be fine. Actually, th- did you hear that a judge uh, shot that down? Yeah. The, the yeah. day before it was supposed to go into implementation. <laughs> but, I mean, why do we have to have a judge? I mean, how many, how many companies and how many businesses had to adjust their, their inventory and everything about their cups that they're selling out of in, in knowing this law was going to kick in only for at the 11th hour, 59th minute and 59th second for a judge to say, up, oh, sorry, change that. You really don't have to get rid of all your 16. I mean, come on. That's well, just absurd. It's just legal idiocy. But know? I mean, the cost to the, the cost to the industry and businesses in New York was astronomical to migrate. Get ready for this. Right. And, and, and they wait until now. I mean, you know, 30 seconds before it's supposed to go into effect to say, OK, we're going to put a hold on it. Why couldn't you have done that three months ago? Well, 
Yeah, you know, the wheels of quote-unquote justice grind so slowly. Yeah, Actually, um, they, they grind us into bread. Yeah, uh, yeah dust, pretty much. Right? <laughs> Let them eat cake, right? Really? <laughs> now, but this, not soda. No, not soda. <laughs> you can't soda. have any soda with that. You can have the cake. Uh, like, no, I'm sorry, change that. We can't have cake or soda. <laughs> like anybody over 12 doesn't know that soda is not good for you. Right. I mean, <laughs> come on. You know, it's right. just, it, it's absolute it's idiocy, and we have what we have is state-sponsored terrorism over what we want to eat. Exactly, and that's and, exactly right, and that's the right phrase too. This is state-sponsored, government-sponsored terrorism against our own domestic population. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Did you see that? Did you see that article in Forbes where they're starting to question this issue of uh, of uh, all this ammunition that? Uh, um, the DHS has been buying. I mean, <laughs> Forbes doesn't normally, you know, get onto stuff like this, right? Right. But I mean, it's it's a really telling article. It's actually very interesting. I posted it up on our Facebook page, so if you okay. want to share it on yours, I'm sure you'll get some. Uh, you know, you'll, people will be interested in reading it. It really is um, uh, very interesting. Okay. Uh, Ralph Benko, the contributor who wrote this, is. I mean, he's just coming right out and saying, "What is going on with this?" You know. Well, you know, there's only one conclusion that can be drawn. You have a domestic agency which purchases what was it, seven thousand fully automatic weapons right. and two point one billion rounds of you know hollow point ammunition, and that's more than was used in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. And what are we supposed to think? About sure. that. Well, this this guy, I mean, he throws it right on the table. He said, it is utterly inconceivable that Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano is planning a coup d'etat against President Obama in Congress to install herself as supreme <laughs> ruler of the United States of America. <laughs> I think she'd like to, by the way. But she there, might. however, are real signs that the department bureaucrats have run amok. About 20 years ago, this columnist worked for two years in the U.S. Department of Energy's General Counsel Office in a procurement and finance division and is wise to the ways. The answer to why would DHS need such a vehicle almost certainly is this. It's a cool toy, and these reportedly million-dollar toys are being recycled without much of an impact on the DHS budget. So why not? <laughs> and, you know, it's like these guys are playing house but with our money, right? Why indeed should the federal government not be deploying armored personnel carriers and stockpiling enough ammo for a 20-year war in the homeland? Because it's wrong in every way. <laughs> I mean, he just go. comes right out and says it, right? No beating around the bush. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, the, the simple truth is, and his point is well taken. He says Obama has an opportunity to live up to the, his, some of his historic rhetoric by helping the federal government set a noble example in a matter very close to his heart, which is the elimination of weapons, right? <laughs> and he can start with his own department called the DHS. In other cool. words, clean up your own house before you tell me mine's dirty, right? Yeah, exactly. That would so, that would be pleasant, wouldn't it? Oh you my know? goodness! Well, so it's just you know it's out of control, and and you know when we talk about uh, you know he he actually has a pretty good comment in here. He says that 15 million rounds, which in itself is pretty extraordinary, and sounds like fun target shooting at taxpayer expense more than a sensible training exercise. That's a stockpile that would last the DHS over a century. Right. To claim that it's to get a low price for a ridiculously wasteful amount is an argument that could only fool a career civil servant. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Feinstein, with the support of Obama, is attempting to ban 100-capacity magazine clips. Doing a little apple-to-orange apple to comparison, 1.6 billion rounds is, well, 16 million times more objectionable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I gotta love it. He just slaps it right he out there. It you know? out there. That's great. So, yeah, I will check that out, and I'll probably cross post it so that you know we can maximize the amount of people that that get they that. Get it. Yeah, yeah. But hey, um, taking this back to this Jason Smith. Yeah, let's talk deal. about that because we've only got a couple minutes left, and I want you to. Uh, I want people to, by the way, because I know you posted it up on your site. I want mm -hmm. people to get over there. It's, it's truthfarmer dot com, folks, and make sure that you get over there and read what Doreen's posted up about this because it will affect you. This is a constitutional amendment, right? And it, here's the thing: this constitutional amendment. These are House Joint Resolution eleven and seven, or seven and eleven, I guess is how they're actually terming it. Um, it is 7 and 11. It is a very nice 11. store where you can get 16 ounce sodas. <laughs> we might be able to get 24 now. Um, <laughs> it's shall the Missouri Constitution, this is what you'd see on the ballot. Shall the Missouri Constitution be amended to ensure 
that the right of Missouri citizens to employ modern farming and ranching practices and equipment shall not be infringed. Now, but, let me hold on. <laughs> let me just throw let me throw this out there. The key operative word, folks, I say this to you all the time, is listen to the language and read between the lines. Mm-hmm. Modern farming, modern technology. Notice that that doesn't guarantee you the right to continue with traditional or non-modern farming. Go ahead. Okay, and then what? now they've amended this. What you would be voting on would be this, um, and it's, it's a little bit longer. That agriculture, which provides food, energy, health benefits, and security is the foundation and stabilizing force of Missouri's economy. To protect this vital sector of Missouri's economy, the right of farmers and ranchers to engage in modern farming and ranching practices shall be forever guaranteed in this state. So all they did is add a preamble to it that makes it sound a little bit more constitutional. No state law shall be enacted which abridges the right of farmers and ranchers to employ agricultural technology and modern and traditional livestock production and ranching practices unless enacted by the General Assembly. Okay, so, so basically we have a constitutional right that you guys can violate anytime you feel like it, depending well, upon how many somebody's willing to bribe you. That, that's pretty <laughs> much how I read it. And Not to mention it, doesn't, it still doesn't <laughs> secure the right of traditional farming or non and, – and, and remember, the word technological means GMO, it means hybrid seed, it means you know, all the bad stuff that we're trying to avoid, right? Well, the, you know, one of my biggest concerns here is with the bioengineered animals, Michael. Right. We've got mice – pigs and you know human <laughs> cows and spider goats and spider they look goats. the same now wait a minute i want to hear what you amended it to because you submitted it an alternative what was that okay well my alternative was this because this kicks butt folks go ahead Ooh, um that agriculture which provides food energy health benefits and security is the foundation and stabilizing force of missouri's economy to protect this vital sector of missouri's economy The right of farmers and ranchers to engage in direct trade with consumers shall be forever guaranteed in this state. No law shall be enacted which abridges the right of farmers and ranchers to employ agricultural practices that secure independent family farms' ability to save seed, preserve livestock bloodlines, or impede their access to market. That's why I love you. (laughs) (laughs) You see, the difference here is that this is a constitutional amendment which actually guarantees the rights of the individual versus the collective and or the corporation. Yes. And that is all the difference in the world. Well, and it, and it literally would guarantee security for us, Michael, as opposed to, because if you cannot produce food and distribute that food to people who want that food... You're a food slave. You, yes. You're, you're basically a serf to a corporate system. It's exactly what we had under the Dutch East India Corporation here. Right. You know, we've got, hey, you can grow whatever you want. You can sell it to one entity. Right. And they can pay you what they want to pay for it. Right. So have at it, folks. Get working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then Let what, us know when you're done. And, and what you would see on the ballot would be that the right of Missouri citizens to employ farming and ranching practices and equipment that ensure the continuance of diversified small farms shall not be infringed. Now we're talking, and shall not be infringed is the Mm -hmm. key operative word. And, you know, I I submitted this to Jason Smith's chief of staff, and what I would like for people to do, this is an action item. Go out there and agitate to get something that will actually help us to provide for ourselves. through Outstanding. Hey, listen, uh, hold on one second. Folks, you've been educated, you've been informed, you've been motivated. Now, Doreen is calling for you to be activated. Get out there, make sure that you're making it clear what's got to happen. Make your make your voice heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doreen, uh, her website can be found at truthfarmer.com. Make sure that you get out there and you capture this information. Inform yourself fully so you know exactly what you're talking about. Then get on the phone and start making a lot of noise. Thank you very much for joining with us this morning, dear. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you. Have a great day. You too. Okay, folks, you can catch us on AmericasVoiceNow.org. We'll be back tomorrow morning, bright and early. Have a great day. Let's get to the point. Let me get to the point. FM News Talk 40 Ozarks is FM.